Good morning. Welcome. Good to see you all this morning. Welcome here to Mid Cities Bible Church. Uh, I trust you all have uh, been praising the Lord, following Him, listening to Him. Good to see you this morning. And just uh, thank Him for His grace and mercy, um, His Holy Spirit that enables us to be able to live and walk with our Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to learn in His Word, to pray. And even when times we got to pray, we don't know how we should pray. The Spirit helps us in that too. And uh, but He bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and we're able to say, "Abba, Father." Amen. By way of announcements, again, visitors' card on the seats here. You fill out, and place the tab in the back of the room here, and the boxes at the back. Also, again, uh, note these uh, our website. Um, you know, write it down. You can give that to a friend or somebody. They can look up and see what our church is about. It's got a lot of information there. And uh, so that's good. Facebook page there. And then, again, our YouTube channel. So we record every service, and then we upload it on Sunday, every Sunday, onto our YouTube channel. So you can go there at any time and go back to any of the previous ones. And uh, QR code there, you're able to just capture that with your cell phone. And then uh, once you go there and initiate, uh, they'll send you an invitation and give you a link. And you can join up. The realm gives us a connection. When we're apart during the week, we're able to communicate with one another, prayer requests, praises, also uh, things that are coming up, events. We announce them on there as well. And uh, special items of prayer especially come up there. All Men's Breakfast is next going to be on April 6th, right over Cheer, and on a Saturday, 8.30 a.m. So guys, come on out. We are going to have breakfast there. So come on out for that time of fellowship together. And continue to pray for the Poema Foundation. Uh, next time is going to be on April 13th. And just pray for the Lord to continue. Just continue to use this ministry in the North Texas region for these missing children to be found and for the Lord Jesus Christ, for them to be drawn to him to be born again. They need that spiritual birth especially. Again, spiritual gifts. you got musical gifts are needed. If you want to serve the Lord, you can do that with the worship team here. So be sure to get with me and let me know. Uh, that's something also to keep in prayer. And then invite your friends. I loved that video last Sunday. That was good. I love tongue-in-cheek sarcasm and satire. I love it. And it was, you know, he had everybody. He was going in their house. He was doing a barbecue. He was getting his hair cut. And he's just not going to tell them about it. Well, you got the message. And so invite friends and neighbors for our Easter service at 1030 on March 31st, last day of the month. And any other Sunday. Doesn't just have to be Easter. Good point there. Okay, let's watch this video and prepare our hearts to get worship here to our Lord. Let's all stand together here. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we look to you, and we know that you are our Heavenly Father. And we praise you for this truth, that this was made possible through your Son, Jesus Christ. By the indwelling Holy Spirit, we know we can praise you, we are led, and he is continuing that work, transforming us, more into the image of your son Jesus Christ 
Thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, prepare our hearts. Draw us to you. Guide us in our worship of you. We want to exalt your name. We want to praise you. You are worthy of all glory and honor and praise. You are the Lion of Judah. You are the Lamb of God. You are the Messiah. You are our Redeemer, our Shepherd, our good and faithful Shepherd. You sacrificed yourself. You died in our place, Lord. And we praise you. We want to praise you as our Savior, our Lord and Master. We want you. We desire to please you in our worship of you. We pray for your Holy Spirit's leading in our time today, guiding your word as well. And all, all points, all aspects of our time together. Lord Jesus, thank you. And Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Nothing will be the same All of my life has changed Just for a moment Heaven was opened I saw you How will I spend my days Now that you've held my gaze all that surrounds me, I'd lose. Now you found me, I'd lose it. For my eyes have seen your glory. For my ears have heard your name. I have placed my hand in your hand. I will never be the same. My tower, my strength, my song You are my salvation Is there no end to your mercy, my friend? You amaze me So I never will return And it's only for you praises to you among the nations for your steadfast love is great and to the heavens your faithfulness to the clouds be exalted O God above the heavens let your glory be all over the earth to the heavens Your faithfulness stretches to the sky Your righteousness is like the mighty mountain 
Your justice flows like the ocean's tide. I will lift my high voice to worship you, my King. And I will find my high strength in the shadow. song we hadn't done this in a while it was written by Keith Green I always love it it's a it's a confessional song it's where we can get in our daily lives where we just little by little we're not as close as we were to him each day as we should be faith is old my heart is hard my prayers are cold and I know how I ought to be alive to you and dead to me can be done for an old heart like mine soften it up with oil and wine the oil is you your spirit of love please wash me
alive to you and dead to me. Oh, what can be done for an old heart like mine? Soften it up with oil. Father God, we thank you for so great a salvation and so great a Savior. Lord Jesus, keep us close to you each and every day, not just Sundays, but all through the week, each day, each month, each year. Lord Jesus, don't allow us to be tempted by the lies of this world. Allow not our hearts to become cold, our prayers a routine. We pray for the work of your Holy Spirit, and we pray for your strength. Lord Jesus, keep us, hold us, shepherd, close to you every day. Don't allow us to stray, Lord. And we praise you, our Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. Good morning. How y'all doing today? If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, say amen. If our Lord is faithful, say amen. What's that? We'll be singing. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Man can't run them all. Amen? The enemy cannot run him all. Amen? This morning, you know, we're coming up on Palm Sunday and Easter, and I thought, I just want to think sometimes the Lord leads you and guides you as a pastor. Those things and portions of his word. And this morning... I want you to turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4. It was the Lord laid this, guide me in this, something that's been on my mind, my heart for some time, and that is here at Mid-Cities Bible Church, we are not a Bible church because we have Bible in our name. Amen? Uh-oh. This might be a hard sermon to hear then. Amen? Too many times... We substitute the Word of God for something else. And too many times we cling to it and hold on to it as if it is the Word of God when it's not. God's Word is God's truth. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. And this is something I said, you know what? Like I said, it's something the Lord's been putting on my heart for some time. This is something I thought this time of year is so important. Because what we know to be true about Jesus Christ is based solely upon what his word tells us is true. And by faith, we believe it and accept it. But see, I'm not going to stand here every Sunday and go, this is the word of God, 
and have you repeat after me, this is the word of God, this is blah, 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 like that, and then deny what God's word teaches us. I'll, the one thing, you'll, I'm not into theatrics, folks. But when it comes to God's word, it is something that I've learned to hold in reverence because his word is powerful. His word is powerful. From the beginning of our Bible, let there be light. Boom. Jesus said, rise up and walk. Heal. Jesus said, peace be still. The waves and the wind stopped. Boom. And they're on the boat going, uh-oh, who is this guy? <laughs> they thought they knew who he was. But see, God's word tells us who Jesus is. He is the Son of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to your word now. Guide us in your truth. Prepare our hearts, Lord Jesus, to receive it. Minister by the Holy Spirit. Teach each of us according to your holy will, Lord, in our lives. Guide us in this time now, Lord, for your glory and the days and weeks, months, and years ahead. Feed us by your word, Lord, our shepherd. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God's word, 2 Timothy 4, 1 to 4. You know, in the Mid-Cities Bible Church, when it comes to our uh, doctrinal statement, most of you are probably familiar with this. We have it up there on our website of the Bible. When God revealed himself in history, those encounters and events were recorded in the Bible. It's often called God's Word. Because it was inspired by God through human, human author, authors. authors. The Bible is true, though people's interpretations of it may not be. It is the supreme authority for our lives. 2 Timothy 3.16, 2 Peter 1.21. When we come in, when we come to Christ, there needed to be that testimony of his word. There needed to be the work of the Holy Spirit. And we are convicted. In fact, Jesus said the Holy Spirit, he's here. He will seek to glorify me when he comes, when the Father sends the Holy Spirit. If I have a volunteer to read for us, 2 Timothy 4, 1 to 4. Volunteer. Okay, Marla. charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who is to judge the living and the dead and by his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be ready in season and out of season reprove rebuke and exhort with complete patience and teaching for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching but have itching ears they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Thank you. Thank you, Marla. See, this God's word. Paul is writing to Timothy. It's believed this is, this is his last epistle before his martyr, martyrdom. There in Rome. Timothy was in Ephesus. This is part of what's referred to as the pastoral epistles, 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus. And here, God is leading his apostle, the apostle Paul, to tell his beloved son in the faith these important words. Chapter 3, he goes through and explains a coming time. But here in chapter 4, 1 to 4, he focuses upon God's word and he tells him God's word must be proclaimed. Why? Because it's truth. He says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, by his appearing in his kingdom. Paul gives a charge and the charge 
gives emphasis upon what he's about to say. And the charge is based upon before the presence of God and of Christ Jesus. Notice he's the judge, the living and the dead, by his appearing in his kingdom. Christ Jesus, we know from God's word, he will come to a time in which he will judge, that is, evaluate. In fact, we're told in 2 Corinthians 5, 9 to 10, that Jesus will have us, will be before the Bema seat there, and as his servants, we are evaluated, we are judged before the judgment seat of Christ, evaluated for our service, what we've done for Christ in our lives here on earth. Everything. The scriptures tell us about those things of, of gold, silver, and precious stone, but then there's also those things of wood, hay, and stubble. And by the fire we'll reveal them, and it will burn up the wood, hay, and stubble. I always love uh, J. Vernon McGee, he used to say, friends, hate to say friends, some will come in there and they're going to smell like they've been to a fire sale. <laughs> They'll be saved. But I trust, I know that each of you, you are serving him and allowing him to use you. Paul gives his charge, the idea of a charge there in the Greek, it was, an, it was a forceful order, and it was to testify an important thing to the audience it's directed. Now, he's doing this to his son in the faith, but it emphasizes how important the word of God is in our lives and for Christ, his body, and for every local church, every body of believers throughout church history. He says, who will judge? Who will judge? John 5, 22 tells us, for the Father, Jesus says this, for the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. All judgment to the Son. And there again, the idea is to evaluate, not judging on sin, whether you're saved or not, but there will be an evaluation of all. See, the books of life are open at one point in the future. And man will be examined. Only those of us that have come through Christ, because only through Jesus are we made righteous. That's why it's so important what we've been studying about the book of Galatians. This kind of ties in with it. Is that it's, we're declared righteous by faith in Christ. It's all that he's done. Nothing that we've tried to do, hope to do, want to do, desire to do. It's what he's already done. And we believe on that. We trust it. We accept it. And it's based on what God's word says. God's word tells us. But notice is all judgment is given to the son. All judgment. And with that charge, he speaks of, and scripture's full of it. We're not going to go into it deep now. But he talks about Christ's coming, about Christ's kingdom, a, a literal thousand-year reign upon this earth when Christ comes back to reign in Jerusalem from David's throne over the whole earth. A thousand-year kingdom, the millennial kingdom, folks, that will be. In fact, the Old Testament prophets speak in detail about what it's like. Now, over the church history, there's been those who have said, oh, we're already in the kingdom. And they teach that Satan is bound right now in the bottomless pit. How many of y'all knew that? Raise your hand if you knew that. Yeah, yeah. And these are, these are I, I don't question their salvation. These are believers. But they, when, you, when you, you need to take the whole counsel of God, interpret Scripture with Scripture, and put it down there and lay it out. Because God's word agrees with, it, with his word. He does not contradict himself. But that's not till the beginning of the thousand-year reign of Christ upon the earth. Satan is bound in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. But back to this. This charge that he gives Timothy, underscoring the importance of the word of God, is in the presence of God and the presence of Jesus Christ who will examine us and evaluate. And he tells Timothy there, because God's word must be proclaimed, he tells Timothy, be consistent in declaring God's word. Be consistent in declaring God's word. First off, he says there, there's a word, preach. You know, a lot of times, 
as a believer growing up I, I'm in the Lord I remember a lot of times I'd hear people say boy man boy that guy could preach boy he could preach but the important thing folks is the idea is to proclaim God's word to herald it in public publicly you and I should proclaim God's word to the lost around us when we declare the gospel that God gave his son Jesus Christ he died on the cross according to the scriptures he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures we are proclaiming God's truth God's word and we appeal to them to place faith in Jesus Christ based upon what God's word tells us is true not what they think of us not what we can do for them but what Christ has already done and his word says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved <laughs> that's good news amen huh oh, okay I'm gonna say that. see we got people out on the road traveling people on vacation so we're gonna need a double up so right there right there there's a knob right there on your left side that's your volume knob okay turn it up just a little bit and it, it, God's word is true amen? amen what we declare about Jesus Christ is true amen? amen and we must declare Jesus Christ in this lost and dying world because I'm going to tell you Jesus makes the difference in an individual's life Jesus will make a difference in a family's life Jesus will make a difference in a neighborhood's life Jesus will make that difference because he changes you from the inside. See, the, the Pharisees and those Judaizers that were attacking all those churches in Galatia, they always wash the outside of the plate. They got it, look how clean it is like that. But he says, inside, the cup is dirty. They're still in their sins. No, we want those that have been cleansed by the Lord Jesus Christ, by his blood, and forgiven of all their sins. And this, this, consistent he says to preach it Timothy proclaim it herald it publicly in season and out of season do you see that he says be ready be ready the idea is to be prepared and in season out of season speaks of consistency see it's one thing to know a portion of God's word it's another thing to show how God's word agrees. See, Jesus said this here. Paul proclaimed this here. Timothy was reminded to do it here. It speaks of consistency. In season and out of season. One commentator points out, says that whether it's to preach the word, whether it's in a time in which it's accepted or unaccepted. Now, I'm going to probably fry some circuits here. There has never been a time on this planet since creation that there have been those that are rejected and refused and were against the Word of God. Yeah. See, it all, the original sin starts back with Adam and Eve. And Adam, who was given that direct commandment, but you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden there. They ate as God sought them out. What did they do? They hid. Did you notice that? Fast forward to John, Gospel of John, chapter 3. John tells us there that men do not come to the light because the light exposes their evil deeds. Right? That's the same chapter that says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But see, we're supposed to proclaim God's word. That's true today, that's true tomorrow, 
That's true 100 years ago. No matter what nation, no matter what continent. Amen? And so the evil one in this world, the ruler of this world, that blinds the minds of the unsaved so they not believe, has always attacked and opposed the word of God because God's word is truth. And there, Paul says, Timothy, preach the word, proclaim it, and be prepared. Do it in season and out of season. There's a point in Paul's ministry where he's getting ready to go back to Jerusalem. And all that the prophets and those led of the Spirit were telling him that you're going to be bound. This is what awaits you in Jerusalem. So as he's heading back to Jerusalem, Paul is there in Miletus. And he summons and calls for the elders of Ephesus, from the church at Ephesus, to come over to Miletus to meet with him one last time. And as he's meeting with them, in that chapter, Acts 20, and that's a good one to read sometime. Don't read it now. Just these two verses. But it's... He goes over all this detail with the, with the elders there about the church and what's coming up and what they're supposed to be doing with that body of believers, that local church. But at one point he says, Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all. For I did not shrink from be- declaring to you the whole counsel of God. I did not shrink. What is Paul saying here? Here again, this charge and testimony is to this truth. Notice, he compares it together. I'm innocent of the blood of all. Why? Because I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel. The whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God. Right? The whole counsel of God. See, it's not my favorite verse. Not just a simple... It's the whole counsel of God because all of God's word is important because it's how God has chosen to communicate to mankind the Torah to his people of Israel coming out of the land of Egypt headed for the promised land but also to the church Paul says in Ephesians the prophets and the apostles are the foundation laying that foundation and now Jesus is building up his church we are living stones okay but that foundation that was laid was the apostles and prophets he's innocent of the blood of all see many times this theme comes up folks in the word of God in the Old Testament as well of the watchman that if you're watching and you see that there's trouble on the way and you warn those around you you warn them then you are innocent of their blood if they do not heed and listen you are innocent of their blood but it says in there, woe be to the watchman that does not warn. Now the blood's on your head. Paul says, I am innocent of the blood of all, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Now Timothy is now there at Ephesus. That's later on after this passage, this part in, in, in the book of Acts. Paul goes then a step further and explains what that preach the word looks like and how God's word is to be used. First off, he says, reprove. Reprove. The idea of that word to reprove is to correct. Okay? It's to correct. But the idea is that it is to take anything that's thought of and considered a certain way and to correct that it's also any action to correct that Uh, God's word will give you and the instruction of how to walk in the spirit how to worship our Lord Jesus Christ how to be a faithful witness of Christ how to have faith and to be confident and confidence through the Holy Spirit and by God's word of knowing that you're sealed until the day of redemption confidence in knowing 
He's word it to correct. And some times in human history, as it's so today, there are those that believe by passing a law, you will correct bad behavior. And if that law doesn't work, we're going to pass another law. Well, what did God have to say about a law? What did his law, how did his law do? What the law did was reveal sin. It was not made to make righteous. It was to reveal sin. That sin is there. We have sin in us. Paul says, I didn't know what it, was, what it meant to, to covet until the law said, you shall not covet. He says, then I was filled with covetousness. See, the word of God corrects. Paul says, preach the word in and out of season, reprove. Secondly, he says, rebuke. Now, the word there, the Greek word means to admonish and to warn. And the idea there is to warn so as to prevent an action or to bring an end to certain actions in one's life. But you admonish and you warn. Now, when Paul says this, Remember, he's telling Timothy to preach what? The word. Not man's word. God's word. Now, when it comes to verses 3 and 4, you'll see more about why Paul's emphasizing and says what he says here. But this has to do with preaching the word. Reprove, correct, rebuke, admonish, and warn. See, what many portions of the, of the pastoral epistles warn to avoid those that teach false doctrines. Those that deny the resurrection of Christ. Those that deny, the New Testament's replete with this, those that deny that Jesus is the Son of God, His deity. That's to be rejected. Why? Because God's Word tells us. See, it's not a matter of I know that or you know that, that he is the Son of God. But God's word tells us, and Jesus very clearly stated that he was the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He is the Christ. All judgment has been given to him by the Father so that the Son would be honored just like as the Father is honored. Back to John chapter 5, 22-23. The book of Hebrews tells us that the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. When you quote God's word to an unbeliever, brother and sister, you have now, you have now presented God's truth and his word is living and powerful. And it will not return to God void. It will not return to him void. I love the quote of one of my favorite uh, preachers of the past. I uh, love to read his stuff. Um, plan to run into him probably up in heaven one day. Is Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon, there was a, uh, a, a famous preacher from the United States, went over to England. Went to the Metropolitan Tabernacle. Heard, heard he said, I heard Spurgeon preach. He heard him preach. Afterwards, he went to him and he talked to him. He says, Charles, what is it? What is it? That, how is it? That, you know, I mean, I've been preaching so many years, but you, when you preach, it's, what is it? Like that. And Charles Spurgeon said, my friend, he said, the word of God is a lion. I simply let him out. I simply let him out. For the body of Christ, for churches today, we need the word of God. We need to be corrected. We need to be admonished and warned. We need to not be left to our own devices, our own selves, our own human reasoning, because God's truth is what set us free because it told us about his son 
our Savior, our Lord, our Master. He told us of salvation by grace through faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. God's Word told us this. God's Word has much to say. And it's for mankind, folks. Our Creator has provided His Word to communicate to mankind His creation. That asked that, plur that plumbing question that we often hear. It's often talked, often discussed, often debated. Why are we here? Where did we come from? He said, Timothy, preach the word in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke. And add again, to warn, to prevent an action or to bring to an end certain actions in, in, the, in believers' lives. Exhort is the other one, he said, the third. And that has the idea to encourage, to comfort. To encourage and comfort. See, God's word can be encouraging. I, we... On the hardest time, the hardest week, the hardest day, there have been times where I've turned to the Psalms. And I go to those Psalms where David, you know, I thought I had a hard time. David's got Saul and his armies chasing him around the mountain there, and he's hiding out in caves. And he's been anointed to be the king, the next king of Israel. He was used of the Lord God to slay Goliath, that nine foot nine giant. Because he said, the battle is the Lord's. That giant looked at him. He said, who are you? This, this knave coming up here carrying sticks and stones. What, who are you to come up against me? I'm the great Goliath. Okay. And he says to him, he says, it's, I, it's not what I'm doing. It's not who I am. But the one who delivered it out of the hands of the bear, the paw, the lion will deliver you unto me, you uncircumcised Philistine. The battle is the Lord's. It was the Lord God that slayed Goliath. All David did was allow the Lord God to use him as an instrument like that smooth stone that struck him in the forehead. Let God use you. Do not shrink, do not fear, but in boldness trust He can use you and wants to use you. The time is short. We're in those days now, folks. The Word of God encourages, comforts. <laughs> and we need comfort, don't we? Now, I'm not talking about mashed potatoes and gravies and pizza and ice cream. Those comfort food. I'm talking about spiritually. Why? Because that's, that's the power of God's Word. See, he didn't tell Timothy. Timothy, always open up with a good illustration. <laughs> Timothy, always had me a couple good jokes to throw out there. Get the, that'll get them back attention. Like it, and no, he says, preach the word. Why? Because, brother and sister, the word of God is God's truth. And by it, by his power, he does miraculous things through his word. He's doing the work right now. Right now, as you're sitting there, there are men, women, and children across this world that are hearing God's word. And God is taking his word and starting to testify, to speak to them, to witness to them. God's word must be proclaimed. And then Paul comes to this next point, verses 3 to 4. He says, Timothy, preach the word, and then he gives them the good news. God's word is not tolerated. God's word is not tolerated. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. That's why he was telling them, be consistent in declaring God's word. It must be proclaimed because God's word is not tolerated. There's no tolerance. Paul tells Timothy, there's no tolerance for sound doctrine because for the time is coming. Now, this is around 65, 66 A.D., folks. 
This is 2024. Paul is pointing forward future. 2 Timothy 4, 3. And he says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. Very, very important. Very important words there. Paul uses this word. Notice it says sound teaching. The word sound. This is repeated and used nine times in the pastoral epistles alone. Nine times in the pastoral epistles. Sound teaching, the idea is healthy doctrine. Healthy doctrine. And it, it speaks, what it speaks of is it speaks of the, the spiritual effect it produces. Because see, the word of God, sound teaching, sound doctrine, promotes a, a what? Spiritual life and spiritual growth. You and I need that. The word there, sound, has the idea of, of healthy, wholesome. Okay, so let's, let's, let's break it into a physical, physical example on the level, okay? If you were to go to your doctor, and you had certain symptoms and certain ailments, and the doctor may say to you, okay, uh, you need to take some more iron supplements. Eat more dark, leafy, green vegetables, because you need iron. You're, 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 you're uh, anemic, right? Okay? Uh, um, there were a time uh, where sailors... Sailing from Great Britain, from England. They would get scurvy. They learned by taking limes and loading them on the ships to eat that. The vitamin C helped prevent scurvy. So, so they teach us there's certain things that are wholesome and good for us to eat. Now, switch that over to the spiritual. Sound teaching from God's Word, because God's Word's truth. It is wholesome, it is healthy, and it produces a good spiritual growth effect. It promotes spiritual growth. It pro promotes what? Spiritual life. If you are struggling and you have, do not sense that strength, that spiritual strength in your life that you had at a time, sit down. And this is something I always used to do when I met with, with a discipling with individuals. Take you a sheet of paper, mark it out Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then I want you to write down how much time you've spent in God's Word that last week. Why? Because the Word of God promotes spiritual life, spiritual growth. It, we draw encouragement, reproof, warning correction from his word he, we need his word that's why Timothy's given this charge preach the word in season out of season R correct, admonish, rebuke but comfort, encourage but what he says here is sound teaching the time, time's coming when people will not endure sound teaching the sound teaching comes from the word of God it's based on the word of God you see God's word God's word tells us about creation We've been studying, there's a Sunday school, uh, or Bible study rather, with some of the men that meet here at 9.30 on Sunday mornings, and uh, Josh heads that up, and they go through and studying, and he started up in the, God, in, in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, going through creation. God's Word tells us about creation. God's Word tells us of where sin comes from. What is wrong with this world? Why do we find this condition in this world? Why are there wars and turmoils and strife and disease? Usually I throw stuff up on the screen, but I want you to flip through or swipe through in your, in your Bibles or on your cell phones. 1 Timothy 1.10. We're looking at this healthy doctrine, healthy teaching, sound teaching, wholesome teaching, that which produces spiritual effect, spiritual life, spiritual growth. First Timothy 1. Let's go to verse 9. Understanding this, he says the law is good if it's used lawfully. Verse 9, understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, 
but for the lawless and the disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslav enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. There's our word, sound doctrine. Wholesome, healthy teaching. God's word, contrary to. See, God's word tells us of creation. We were created by God. God's word tells us that he created the universe and all that we see. He created life. God tells us he created Adam and Eve. God tells us he created two genders. And God's word tells us that we're sinners that must be saved only by God's intervention. And he provided a redeemer, his son Jesus Christ, to come from heaven and to go to that cross and die on that cross to save sinners. All men are sinners. All men, women, and children are sinners. Christ died for sinners, for you and me. Now, the important matter here is all these people that Paul lays out that the, that the law is not, is not laid out for the just before the, and he listed that laundry list there in, in verse 9 of 1 Timothy 1. Those are who we need to proclaim the good news of salvation in Christ to. Because Paul was a murderer and a blasphemer. But he says, by God's grace, he was saved. So we've got to remember that. Remember that when those opposing God's will and opposing God's word lash out in anger and a hatred toward us because we're believers in Christ, it is spiritual, folks. And they have been deceived by the enemy. Do not take it personal. But allow the Lord to use you as his testimony, his witness. Because that they might come to Christ and be born again. what he's about amen he doesn't turn anyone away come unto me all you heavy and burdened heavy laden come to me look over at uh, Titus now this is after 2nd Timothy pastoral epistles 1st 2nd Timothy and then Titus chapter 1 verse 9 there Paul writes to Titus he sent him out there uh, to create, to appoint elders in each of the towns and each of the churches there. And then we read there in chapter 1, verse 9 of Titus. He must hold firm about that, the spiritual leader, an overseer, an elder. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. Notice that, sound doctrine. Again, wholesome, healthy teaching spiritual life, spiritual growth. See, the unsaved, when confronted with God's word, brings conviction. It can bring anger. Remember, they can sit there and, and go all day long about, well, you know, you know, well, you know, they're scientists found blah blah like that. But the bottom line is, according to God's word, and we believe that to be true, He is who created us. He knows our spiritual need. He has provided his son. His word is true, and Jesus is coming again. And those that do not receive his son, those that are not forgiven, will bear the penalty of their sins, and there is hell. But heaven awaits those who come, repent, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. God, out of love for this world, provided his son for them. First, was it? Oh. Titus 2.1. But as for you, he tells Titus, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Healthy, wholesome doctrine. Again, he emphasizes that. Teach this sound doctrine. If you're back over now, join with me back to 2 Timothy 3. 
verse 16 and 17, right before chapter 4. Verses 16 and 17 of 2 Timothy 3. Paul says, God's word must be proclaimed, and he says, time is coming when people will not tolerate, endure, tolerate the word of God. There will be no tolerance for sound doctrine. And in 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 to 17, Paul makes his statement to Timothy. And he reminds, verse 15, Timothy, how from your childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Great news. What precedes it? But understand this, 2 Timothy 3.1. That in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self. What does it do for me? Lovers of money. Proud. Arrogant. Abusive. Disobedient to their parents. Ungrateful. Unholy. Heartless. Unappeasable. Slanderous without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. tells Timothy, remember the scriptures, how they made you wise into salvation from the time you were a child. Talked about his mother and his grandmother, the faith of his mother and grandmother as well in his letter. Verse 16, all scripture is given, 316, breathed out, is given, how? Breathed out by God, inspired, God breathed, and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So there are many opposing views and teachings. Notice he says here, they will not endure or tolerate sound doctrine, sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. See, the figuratively, the idea here of having itching ears is, is curiosity. It's not that they have fleas or lice. It's that, it's that they are curious. They, they want to hear. They're interested in pursuing uh, those uh, interesting pieces of information of different things. They, it's, it's like taking one thing. Um, I can guarantee you that you follow this and you will be successful. You will experience prosperity. And folks are drawn to that. The problem is, nowhere in God's word does he promise that we have a kingdom express card. Now, I'm, I'm using the phrase of some of those teachers. I've sat and listened to them teach. You have a kingdom express card your problem is, brother and sister, you're not using it. I've heard that. Rebuke. There is no kingdom express card. There is one, Jesus Christ. And sometimes God's word tells us that he may walk us through suffering. That we walk in the steps that Jesus walked. And no one encourages or wants suffering but you must by faith believing and trusting what God's word assures us those times of suffering he brings you through for a purpose and you're identifying in his sufferings with Christ we say I want to be like Jesus I all the world the witches call me I would be like Jesus but well that comes with it too, folks. The Word of God, we need that to encourage and comfort us that when we go through those sufferings and struggles, Jesus went through sufferings and struggles on this earth. He was attacked. He was maligned. He was accused. He was rejected. He was mocked. And He did His Father's will. 
And he said at one point, when he looked at that cup that awaited him, he said, bless you. That's not what he said. That was George talking. He said, Father, I wish that this cup might be passed from me. But not my will, but your will be done. If you, fellow believer, if you seek to walk with the Lord and allow him to use you and you want to become transformed more into his image, you will experience persecution, attacks, rejection, mockery, suffering. It will come. It will come from sources that you may have never anticipated nor you wished would, would ever happen. It may come from your own family. But the thing is this. God's word tells us that even those that will seek, Paul reminds Timothy towards the end, those that seek to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. That persecution can come in many different forms. You know, they don't have to just come in your house, kick the door down, take your Bible out of your hand. I'll take that <laughs> and throw you in jail. Persecution comes in a lot of different forms. Rejection, isolation, Treat it as if you're a fool. Jesus' own brothers mocked him and said, if you're, you're, okay, if you're the Messiah, then show yourself. Go down to Jerusalem. Why are you hiding up here? The religious leaders. Ah, you. See, up on, up on that cross. You declare yourself the destroyer. You rebuild the temple in three days. If you're a Messiah, come down from the cross and we'll believe. How do we respond to that? Well, in that situation, Jesus responded this way. Forgive them, Father. Forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. And I want to encourage you this morning. Proclaim his word. Trust in his word. And when you're rejected and when you're persecuted, forgive them. And pray for them to come to Jesus Christ that they might be forgiven. Their eternal soul is on that balance. But they have itching ears, Timothy. Time's coming. The idea of accumulating, they're gathering together, amassing together large groups of teachers that suit their own passions. The idea of what they desire, what they want. Do you see how that goes against what God's word says? Because see, no longer are they saying, okay, teach us what God tells us. Teach us what Jesus wants us to do. Teach us about what it is to be a believer and to live in this world. Teach us what it is to serve Christ. Teach us about uh, where we draw our confidence and boldness from. Teach us about the Holy Spirit. No, they have desires and wants, so they draw those people to them. And so that's why you find certain churches can grow and be established as they proclaim something that's contrary to the word of God. But it suits the desires and the lusts and the wishes of those that gather. Paul says that time's coming. And again, this is God's word. It's not George's word. This is God's word. See, God's word is not tolerated. And Paul goes further. He says there will be no room for truth. He says that not only will they accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passion and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Turn away. The idea is they, they're unwilling to listen to God's word, his unadulterated word. They'll turn away from it, reject it, and then they'll turn, what? Wander off into myths. The word of the myths there. The Greek word, has, in that day, Paul's day, had the idea of, of false ideologies, philosophies, viewpoints that oppose sound doctrine, oppose God's word. See? So that's why it's important. Just like the Bereans, Paul went there. The Bereans, they searched the scriptures to see if what Paul was teaching them was true. I encourage you, always search the scripture. No matter who preaches up here, no matter who you hear on the radio, Watch on YouTube. Open up his word. Study it out. Search his word and allow his word to be that foundation and that, that compass of due north 
to guide and lead you. Because his word is powerful. Get in his word. The old saying is that uh, get in his word and God's word will get in you. It's a fanciful statement, but it kind of gets points across. His word is true. Read through Psalm 119. All that the word of God does. How is word, what it is, and how it affects and benefits them. But see, they will. So that's why today, folks, there are philosophies, viewpoints dominant in our culture and in other cultures, in Europe and other parts, and even in East Asia, that go contrary to God's word, oppose God's word. So recognize it. Always point to God's word. Trust his word to be powerful and be Christ's witness. You know, the only time you saw Christ, and you re- don't take my word on this, you study this out in the Gospels, the only time Christ was not accepting and loving of sinners was when he would go after the religious leaders in his day that were not proclaiming God's truth. They had adopted traditions in them. I encourage you, go in God's word. God's word is his truth. And by it, we learn. By it, we are fed. And in a way that we cannot, I can't, I I know the word of God. I've studied it for years. Greek and the Hebrew. I've studied theology. But I can tell you this. I don't, can't explain to you exactly how he does it. But by his word, he does it. And the Lord works through his word. In that time you're there, you may not sense it or feel it. He works through his word. His word is true. And when it says it does not return to him void, you share his word with someone that is not saved. You believe that and you pray for their salvation. Pray, Lord, if you have to, wake them up in the middle of the night and remind them of what your word says there about you. Draw them to you. Pray for the work of the Holy Spirit on their heart. Pray for them daily. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Lord Jesus, keep us in it. Convict us, correct us when we are not spending the time that we should be in your word. Feed us from your word. Strengthen us. Transform us more into your image, Lord Jesus. Help us by the indwelling Holy Spirit to serve you, to follow you, and to be used by you. And We pray all this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good Lord. Good morning. Uh, oh my gosh. Hello, hello, hello.
last person who needs a microphone. <laughs> um, wow, George, great sermon this morning. Um, first of all, when we sang the song, Your Love, O Lord, really brought me back to what I had been studying this week about talking to you guys about family sharing. And in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Do you know that God loves you? You individually? <laughs> Maybe you heard the truth all your life, but if you know God loves you, do you sense and recognize God's love? Because it comes at little bitty tiny moments. It comes in great big things. It comes when you're least expecting it. And I find that to be very comforting for me. When we stop believing we're loved by God, we start to get discouraged. Because if you don't believe God loves you, then you can't experience his grace and mercy. The best way to defeat that discouragement is to remember how much God loves you and to stay focused on that truth. I think that it's um, important in our family that we share what's going on in our lives.
Judy. Well, let's all stand together here. This is another one we hadn't sung in a long time, and I, I come across them, I'm like, oh, we had done that. You get to it. Glory, glory, I've been singing since I laid my burden down. Glory, glory, I've been singing since I laid, oh Lord, I laid my burden down. I'm singing hallelujah, God is able, hallelujah, God is faithful, hallelujah, Lord, I'm going to sing. I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burden down. I feel better, so much better, since I laid, oh Lord, I laid my burden down. I'm singing hallelujah. God is able, hallelujah. God is faithful, hallelujah. Lord, I'm going to sing. I'm singing hallelujah. God is able, hallelujah. God is faithful, hallelujah. Lord, I'm going to sing. As long as I'm alive, there's going to be praise in as long as I'm alive, there's going to be shouting. One thing that I know, deep down in my soul, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to sing. I'm singing hallelujah, God is saved, hallelujah, God is faithful, hallelujah, Lord, I Gonna sing. I'm singing hallelujah. God is able, hallelujah. God is faithful, hallelujah. Lord, I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing. Amen. He is able every day. Brown bag lunch. Invite all y'all stay at Brown Bank Lunch right after our service today. If you didn't bring anything, again, you can go right down the street. Got plenty of time. Grab something, come back, or just have the time of fellowship and grab a bottle of water. It's always good, okay? The Lord bless y'all and use you in the week ahead. And remember about Easter, invite the friends and neighbors.